So as you know, the meta constantly evolves and you always seem to have to adjust to it constantly. From meta shifts that just, you know, happen on their own to monthly balances that shake things up in the meta, picking the best decks to run will ensure that you are always staying just one step ahead of the meta. Hey guys, Lennon right here, and today I've compiled five of the easiest decks to run in this meta that actually work super well. These meta decks have won countless grand challenges in the past week, and due to their more controlling based playstyle, results in a much lower skill cap required to play these decks at a competent level. So, as I go into these decks, you'll notice that all of these decks stress defending, and then making positive trades, and then going from there. Now before we go into the video, if you could please leave like and subscribe to my channel that would greatly help me out also go check me out on my socials links in the description and with that out of the way let's get right into the list number one goblin giant sparky this is a deck that has been pretty popular in the past few metas but this deck has just gotten even more popular why well, it's most likely due to a decrease of P.E.K.K.A. Lightning decks, which have since been replaced with more poison in the past few weeks. This means that P.E.K.K.A. players not only lack a good way to reset a Sparky, but they also lack ways to take it out as well, resulting in the Sparky just getting so much value everywhere. This also applies to many other decks, where the Snowball in place of a Zap means that players struggle to have a proper answer. So, how is this deck played? Well, by playing more defensively at first. As a general rule, I don't play a Sparky much at this time until you find out what your opponent may be using. The last thing you want to happen is for you to cycle your Sparky in the back and your opponent rushes opposite lane immediately with some sort of giant push. So basically, just try and survive while taking as little damage as possible until double elixir time. And you've got plenty of tools for this. The Goblin Cage is an excellent defender and so are the Dark Prince, which covers Splash, as well as the E-Wiz and Mega Minion, which will carry the bulk of the air defense. In double elixir time, however, is when you turn on the heat. Since you also know what matchup you are against, you also know whether or not you need to save your Sparky for a certain card, such as the Golem, or simply just play the Sparky in the back to build up a massive push. Number 2. P.E.K.K.A. Control Now of course, this list will obviously have P.E.K.K.A. on it. I mean, it, there's just gotta be. P.E.K.K.A. with its recent melee buff to long range just makes the P.E.K.K.A. have a much lower skill cap, meaning that you'll have a much easier time on defense as well as on offense too. In addition to that, the Magic Archer, with its increased damage output, is able to just get so much value. Of course, in 90% of your matchups, P.E.K.K.A. will you know, either have the matchup or will have a good fighting chance. This is due to a very effective balance between pressure and control, with the classic bandit battle ram combo for some quick and heavy pressure, as well as the P.E.K.K.A. and the Dark Prince, which focuses more on the defensive side and allows you to gain positive traits on defense. So, how is this deck played? Well, semi-aggressively. You can start off the match, you know, with something cheap such as a bandit at the bridge, and you can also maintain a constant pressure on your opponents throughout single elixir. But what you don't want to do is overcommit on defense or offense. Instead, focus on making positive trades on defense, and if your opponent uses something high elixir in the back, feel free to pressure in the opposite lane. This pressure will often force your opponents to defend opposite lane, preventing them from being able to build up a big push. Also, after a successful defense with a surviving P.E.K.K.A., you can also create some intense double lane pressure as well, so be sure to turn on that heat when double elixir hits. Number 3. Lava Hound Clone. Oh boy, the deck that everyone has called no skill is still a force in the meta to be reckoned with. Now this deck is probably one of the easiest decks to play on this list as you can literally just, you know, pick up this deck and find success with it. Now of course if you really want to go technical and up your game you can, but for the most part as long as you understand the basic strategies of this deck, it's a deck that can just dominate without the player having to know much technical knowledge about it. So, with this deck, I usually wouldn't make the first move. I mean, if you want to be aggressive and risk it, some players do Lava Hound first play, but it's not something that I would personally do or recommend. What I like to do is usually to defend a push first. This way, I can figure out what their win condition is. Adding on to that, if you defend that first push, 
That means they probably won't have their win condition in cycle, which frees you up to play a Lava Hound in the back much more safely. Of course, you know, support your push with a Baby Dragon, a Flying Machine, and a Lumberjack, but you also have to be very careful about one thing, your opponent's spells. The biggest issue with this deck is that it is quite weak to spells, but of course, if you space out your units in a wise manner, this may also be a sort of bait type deck. You know, once you bait out your opponent's fireball, poison, or tornado, then you can just go ahead and use your clone and absolutely dominate. Number four, Giant Skeleton Clone. Wow, this is actually the first time that I will feature a Giant Skeleton deck on one of these lists. But recently, you know, Clone is starting to be seen in Giant Skeleton, whose usage has also seen a slight increase as well. Now this deck basically screams 5k ladder, but it also seems to work at a tournament standard as well. Of course, you know, there are a ton of synergies from the Poison Bait between the Furnace, Flying Machine, and Witch, to also heavy defenders such as the Giant Skeleton, as well as some quick pressure with the Cannon Cart. And of course, the clone just adds insult to injury, doubling the Giant Skeleton's Bomb, the Witch's Skeletons, and the Skeleton Barrel as well, so the clone can just also form a sort of spell bait synergy with pretty much any other card. Also, with Witch and Furnace baiting out a poison, it'll also free you up to play a clone as well. So, this deck is a pretty defensively oriented deck, as expected. The Furnace is a very effective way to get good chip damage, and all your units are quite expensive, meaning that they are high utility defensive cards meant to defend a really big push and then counter push as well. Other than that, your playstyle is pretty similar to, again, most other decks on the list. Just try and survive until that double elixir time, and then after that, you will have a much easier time, as a lot of the cards in this deck are a little more on the expensive side. Also, the Tornado is another card that just works in this deck. With the Giant Skeleton's Bomb or even the Witch, this deck is just packed full of synergies. Number 5, P.E.K.K.A Fireball Bait. And as expected, we've got a second P.E.K.K.A deck on this list. And oh man, is P.E.K.K.A good in this meta. So of course, this deck is a bit different than the other ones. This one is a pure Fireball Bait deck with the Magic Archer, E-Wiz, and Royal Hogs all being put together in one combination. Also, the Rascals can bait out small spells too, which are also good uh, for the Royal Hogs because, you know, a lot of players will use something like a log on the Royal Hogs, and when, when they use the log on the Rascal Girls, then they can't use it for the Royal Hogs. That being said, this deck does have its similarities to the P.E.K.K.A. Control deck, with the P.E.K.K.A., the Magic Archer, and the Bandit all in this deck as well. However, it still synergizes so well with the Bandit applying quick pressure and the Royal Hogs forming a much beefier push. So, this deck is played rather similarly to P.E.K.K.A. Control as you would expect, being very focused on controlling the match with positive elixir trades on defense. Then. You can push with the Royal Hawks in two ways. You can put them all in the same lane for intense pressure when your opponent's big spell is out of cycle, or you can split them, applying some double lane pressure as well. In addition, if you do split the Royal Hogs, your opponent will often have to spend more than 5 elixir to counter them, resulting in a positive trade for you as well. Magic Archer can also get so much value, and especially in this Fireball Bait deck, because often your opponents just simply won't have a proper answer to the card as it just snipes away from their pushes from all the way across the arena. So there we go, the top 5 decks that are rather easy to use but still absolutely dominate this September meta. I've tried to choose a wider variety of decks, although they are mostly control based, because the control playstyle is one that is much easier to pick up and play. I hope you guys found at least one of these decks interesting, and I strongly recommend that you at least give one of these decks a try. Does your deck do well in the meta? Be sure to let me know your cool decks in the comment section below. But unfortunately guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legend Array, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.